I'm Katie from Homestead How. In today's video, we're going to go to Menards so we can build a vertical garden, which I'm not going to do it if I don't get twenty dollars. Perfect. Katie's going to build this entire vertical garden herself. We're going to teach her and maybe use some things along the way, and we're going to add an off-grid automated irrigation system to this using our gravity-fed rainwater barrel. Be sure to watch till the very end. We also have some of our favorite homestead photos of the week, and this week Katie took them all. So we're leaving the homestead, heading off to Menards to pick up some supplies so that my daughter Katie can build this A-frame vertical garden. I know there's still snow on the ground, but we're prepping early. She's going to build this entire project herself. I'm going to hold the camera, make sure everything's safe. And this thing turns out amazing in the end. It's a really cool project. It doesn't cost very much money. We're just using two by twos. And we've got a Google SketchUp drawing we did. We have the download link available to you in the description. Let's. Head to Menards and get some parts and get started. We only needed a few supplies. I will leave a list in the description below. We got three 10 foot gutters, 10 two by twos pressure treated, a couple hinges and some end caps for the gutters, a few other miscellaneous parts. Well, Safety is number one priority. You gotta wear those the whole time, okay? Here's our design. It's a little A-frame garden. It uses some gutters. And now is the opportunity to customize it. We have the measurements on here, they might be kind of hard to see, but this is four feet, this is five feet. So to get started, we're getting organized, pulling a table out and getting all the materials out so we can start measuring and marking. Four feet, actually let's go see if we can find this board in the other garage real quick. So we found a leftover piece of cedar. Tape. You're gonna use a little girly tape measure? Well, I... well, you can if you're a girl. There you go, so you got your girly tape measure. You got the square, now you need a pencil. Don't push so hard. So the first part we're building is this ladder. It's not really a ladder, but that's what we're calling it. So we're gonna cut the wood for this ladder and the ladder on the opposite side. I'm teaching Katie a few things here. One being when you make a mark to try to do a little arrow. It kind of helps when you go to cut it and know right where the center is. I'm also showing her how to use a speed square and the purpose of it. See a little measurement? So you turn this. And you can go right there. That's 15 degrees. We want to be at zero degrees. And when you get it at zero, it clicks. But look, there's some play in it. This is called a square. It makes things square, which means perfectly 90 degrees perpendicular. If you put this here, you can kind of see and you can even put the saw down to see. Is that straight? I'm going to go this way just a little bit. See that? Now it's perfect. Or you can line it up with like this edge of it right here. Okay, the, the number one most important Does thing. Is there a laser? No, there's no laser. We don't use lasers here at Homestead Hop. The most important thing is safety. Safety is number one. Don't touch it. And keep your hands over here. Do not touch this until your hands are out of the way. Okay? Put your hand over here, tight, don't move that hand, and now don't touch the button yet, and just line it up with your line first. That's pretty good. And you always gotta make sure it's tight, people make that mistake where it'll be like this a little bit, and then it'll be crooked, it's gotta be tight. You go real slow when you do it, and then you gotta come down. Start it up and hold the button down. Okay, that's really good. Just always remember where that hand is and really think about it, because that's the hand you're going to lose the finger on if you get dumb. Or if you're like, oh, it's moving, oh no, don't ever cut your thumb off. You shouldn't cut your thumb off, is my point. The other thing too is just remember, even though you have this guard, that thing is still turning for like 10 seconds afterwards, so you want to be real careful not to get your hand or sleeve or anything near that thing. Like a boss. Cool, now we got a shelf. Not only that, this is cedar. Cedar is one of the woods that doesn't rot in water. 
We have pressure treated because we're cheap. If we weren't cheap, we could have built this all out of cedar. Now I kind of wish I would have looked for prices for cedar. So now that the pieces are cut, Katie is laying out the ladder. She's putting the two side pieces next to each other and marking some lines a foot down for each of the cross rungs on the ladder. Not 100% necessary, but we are using a countersink bit to pre-drill the holes. This is pretty wet green wood. It's not likely to crack, but we want to do a nice job. I was just telling Katie this impact driver is my favorite tool on the homestead. I own two of them and it is by far the most used tool, maybe close second to the chainsaw. The only tip I had for her there is watch your other thumb. If you put your thumb next to the screw, you could impact your thumb, which I did in a video a couple months back. Okay, we're doing a little demo. We got both sides. We're calling these the ladders. This is going to end up looking like this when it's done with the shelf in the middle. These are going to stick over too. So now we have to attach this to that. These are the hinges. They are four inch light strap hinges. Say here. You get to install those. So we're gonna put them on here. And the reason we're using hinges is we'll be able to fold this down at the end of the year if we wanna put it away. The only minor issue we ran into and didn't account for in our Google SketchUp was these hinges are a little bit too long or our shelf on the top just isn't wide enough. In either case, the hinges won't be able to go over one another, so we're putting one slightly to the left and right of the other. I don't think anyone will notice. For this video, we'll leave a link to the Google SketchUp. You'll have all of the dimensions and everything you need if you want to build this yourself, and a link to the irrigation system we're using at the end of the video. Looks pretty good, what do you think? Looks good. We can put stuff on the top which is an improvement from the ones we've seen. Now we have to cut the gutters and then we figure out what kind of angle we want here and we attach these cross boards, cut those and then we should be good to go. Some of the other plans we've seen online and there are quite a few use some tie wraps to attach the gutters to the A-frame. We bought some gutter attachment clips. They were kind of expensive though but I think it looks a little nicer. Katie and I are really happy with how this turned out. It looks great, it's gonna work really well, but we're not done yet. Keep watching till the end because we're gonna add an automated irrigation system we purchased for $30 off of Amazon. The only thing I wasn't entirely happy with was this wasn't as sturdy as I'd like, but that's kind of to be expected using two by twos. I guess it is better to have it a little bit lighter and being able to fold it up and put it away at the end of the season. All right, what do we got? This should be the thing for the thing. Rain drip. You get to install it. If you want this, you can get it on Amazon. It's an automatic watering kit. The cool thing is it comes with this little timer that you hook up to your hose and we can set it and this garden is gonna be almost 100% maintenance free. I mean, you're not gonna to have to go out there, Katie, every day and water it. It'll water it for you. You have to go out there and weed it and plant the seeds and stuff. All right, let's go. I got the line. Instructions, throw those in the trash. We don't need instructions. Ooh, this is the cool part. This is the part that's gonna allow us to water this thing on a regular basis. If you watch our channel, you'll know that last year we added some IBC totes to collect rainwater, and we have a really good gravity-fed system we're gonna hook this up to, so it'll be a completely off-grid irrigation system for a vertical garden on a timer running on a little battery. Here, open it in the gutter and then we can Step, try to separate the pieces and don't spill it all over on the ground if you want to. Oh, you stick these in the in the dirt. So some these dirt ones, hey, put them there for now. We'll put the dirt ones in here because we're not going to be starting this for a couple weeks. I'm the idiot that ordered this. I don't know if I got the best one. I got the hanging basket one, but it should work. You you draw a line down, you tee off the line, and then you have a little plant dripper.
So these hoses just clip together. It comes with a bunch of T's and connectors and it's just a friction fit. They are really tight to get on there. It'd probably go on if it was a little bit warmer, but we're able to get them in there pretty easily. Our bottom drippers, middle drippers, and now we're making up the top drippers for this row. So I'm not sure on our engineering here. We used a bunch of the three-way splitters to branch off. We probably could have done one long run branching off of each one. I'm not sure what's best, but we're gonna test this out with the hose in our next video. So more is better. We can always cut it off. We're not gonna use this for anything else. Oh, I am saving some for repairs. We gotta test it out, we gotta hook the hose up to it. I left a lot of slack on here. I guess one little tip, if you're trying to do this yourself is, leave a little extra slack so you can move them around afterwards, like that, and adjust them. It's better to have more than less because we did quite a bit of work and we still have all this left. Um, we got the extra pieces here and here, so we can always uh, adjust it later as needed or fix it if we get any holes or leaks. We can always replace it with some. They sell different kits. That's the other tip. We purchased the automatic watering kit for containers and hanging baskets, which is kind of dumb because they have like soaker hoses. They have a whole bunch of other kits, but this should work just great. I want to see if I can buy a kit because well, I have enough hose. I just need a couple more of these to go up and get the baskets that we're going to have up here. Is it called baskets? I don't know. We're going to have some container plants on the top up here. And I'm going to tee off of this if it works. But I'm going to wait till we get those and see what the height are so it's not too messy. But this is pretty cool. It's really easy to put together. It took us about a half an hour. Have some extra staples if you're going to do a lot of stapling. Like if you do this exact project. This is kind of a weird project. But they give you plenty of these. So once you have the dirt in there, you can stick it in the dirt. And then you have this. I'm going to go watch a video online. So I understand fully how this works. But it's an automatic waterer. So Katie's going to plant her garden. Be sure to subscribe and check back for that. This is entirely hers. Jen's going to make up some labels on a Cricut machine. It's going to say what each of the plants are. Katie's going to plant the whole thing. This is going to be hers. And it's going to be easy because she's not going to have to water it. It's going to automatically water itself. She's just going to have to pick weeds and then harvest the vegetables once they're ready.